What's going on, Geminites? Gem Mint here with another Omnibus comic book haul. Before we get started, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video, and make sure that you stay tuned till the end of the video so you can get some details on how to enter our 125k giveaway where we're giving away a Spider-Man statue by Sideshow. Two big shout outs before we get started. First to Marvel Comics, they sent us the trades, the Marvel Select, and an omnibus here as an early release. And to Organic Price Books, who are like the big new name in town for buying your omnibus and collected editions online. They have excellent packaging, awesome customer service, competitive prices, and you can save two bucks off your first order if you use the code GEMMINT at checkout. All right, first let's jump into the trade paperbacks. Marvel did send these ones as an early release. The Conan one releases today, but the Star Wars one comes out on April 7th. We'll take a look at the artwork, we'll talk about the contents and the price. All right, so here's the two trade paperbacks from Marvel Comics, printing newer material. We're going to start by looking at Conan the Barbarian into the Crucible. Now, this is considered Volume 1 by Zub, Antonio, Gil, Pizzari, and Silva, but it collects issues 13 through 18 from the 2019 series of Conan, so the new ongoing that Marvel started publishing once they got the rights back to the character. So this is a run that I have not been reading. I just never picked up the number one issue. And I, I haven't been following Conan in the Marvel Universe. But a uh, good way to get caught up is these trade paperbacks. So as you can see, has modern artwork. Has the covers here. Issue 14 looks great. So kind of what you would expect. M uh, modern Marvel artwork with the Conan character. They've been printing a lot of old material. And they've been including him in Avengers books like Savage Avengers. And his own title here, look, we got is that Kingpin? No. Nah. For a second I thought it was Kingpin. <laughs> but uh, he does mingle with the Marvel characters in Savage Avengers. But there you go, that is the Conan trade. Then you have Star Wars. So I was reading Star Wars. I ended up dropping the title. Uh, so I don't know if I read this material. Let's see, this is by Sol, Rosanas, Basil Dua, and Rosenberg. This is Operation Starlight, and it collects issues 7 through 11. I must have read some of this. I've really been digging the Darth Vader ongoing, but the Star Wars ongoing, I don't know. I kind of felt like it was all over the place. So let's take a look here, see what's going on. I'm trying to remember if I read these issues. I might have stopped reading this book after the first arc. I'm trying to see if anything is jogging my memory here. Not really. I think this is right, right, around the time where I stopped reading this stuff. Well, those are the two trades from Marvel. So this one has a $15.99 cover price, and this one has a $17.99 cover price. All right, next up, the Marvel Select Garth Ennis Punisher. Welcome back, Frank. This one comes out today as well. And I thought it was interesting that Marvel's continuing to publish Punisher stuff. So there's a lot of questions in the air on whether or not we're going to see more from Frank. But this is a pretty good indication that Marvel's going to continue with the character. Let's take a look at Welcome Back, Frank. All right, let's take a look at the Marvel Select Edition for Punisher. Welcome back, Frank. This is the Garth Ennis run, which collects the first 12 issues from his regular Marvel run, not the Marvel Max run. $30 cover price for the 12 issues. And this is a format where Marvel just kind of picks out highlight runs from creators. So this is their Garth Ennis version, Welcome Back, Frank. I, I read this. I did a review of it. You can check that in the link right there to get my thoughts on it. It's been a couple of years since I've read this material. But it's Garth Ennis and Steve Dillon, so pretty much the raunchy, violent, <laughs> explosive, kind of in-your-face stuff that you would uh, expect from that duo. So here we go, got some Daredevil vs. Punisher action. Let's see. Oh, is that? Oh, yeah, Spack or Dave, I remember that. <laughs> I remember when I did my review, I was asking people, like, what does that even mean? And uh, so they lit up the comments with what that means. So cool. So if you uh, don't have the Omni, you don't collect the Omni, if you like these Marvel Selects, get your uh, Garth Ennis Punisher on. All right, guys. Here from Dark Horse, we have Blade of the Immortal Deluxe Edition Volume 2. I absolutely love all of these deluxe editions that Dark Horse is printing. Berserk, Helsing, and now Blade of the Immortal. I am very interested to see what they do next if they continue to reprint manga in this format. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. 
So like all the Dark Horse manga collected editions or deluxe editions, they have this paper that comes in the plastic, which gives you a synopsis of what's going on in this volume. This is volume two, obviously. It has a $49.99 cover price. And this is pretty much all you get here. Now I did do a review of volume one. You can check that one out right there. <laughs> Let me know if you guys want to see a review for volume two. I absolutely love these deluxe editions from Dark Horse, man. Now this one reads left to right, which was the creator's intention when he translated it to English. He flipped panels and did everything he could do to convert it to a Western style of reading. So for those out there who are upset with the left to right and not your traditional manga reading right to left, that's the reason why. And they probably talk about it in here because that's the same type of page from volume one, which explains that this is not a Nazi thing. And other things from uh, Mr. Samura's Blade of the Immortal. So I have not read this volume yet. I just read Blade of the Immortal with the last deluxe edition. These typically collect three volumes, so this is probably four through six. I'm a fan of uh, the genre. I've been liking like these adult-themed mangas. So I'm definitely looking forward to, I'm, to read this. I'm going to read it either way, whether I do a review or not. So... I was liking uh, where the first volume went, and I'm looking forward to this one. All right, guys, here goes the new printing of Annihilation Conquest from Marvel Comics. This one comes out on May 12th and is the second printing. So we'll take a look at its contents. We'll take a look at the price, what it collects, the artwork, and all that good stuff. So let's jump into it. All right, on to the new printing for Annihilation Conquest. I remember when Annihilation was out of print and it was a grail, and this book was discounted at comic shops for like $30 then it went out of print and then this became a whale in itself and uh it's been a while since I read this material so this is Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning's Guardians of the Galaxy pre-MCU this is the new Guardians team that they put together which became the Guardians of the Galaxy that we know and love the Annihilation Conquest is a sequel to Annihilation and it collects Nova issues 1 through 12 plus Annual 1. Then all the Conquest miniseries, the Prologue, Star Lord 1 through 4, Quasar 1 through 4, Wraith 1 through 4, and then the main storyline issues 1 through 6 plus Annihilation Saga, $125 cover price. The inside of the dust jacket talks about the new team. It talks about the Phalanx, which is the big enemy in this issue that teams up with Ultron. Uh, here goes uh, some biography on all the creators here, uh, including Sean Chen, Wellington Alves, Keith Griffin, and more. The actual hardcover has like a virgin variant of that Annihilation Conquest issue of Ultron, which looks awesome. Same image on the spine and on the back, just no trade dress, no, no text. So here we go, We've got the interior baby blue pages. This run also introduces Wraith, which I believe it was a Donny Cates that brought back into the recent, I don't know if it's King of Black or was it an Absolute Carnage, but he brought the character back. Uh, the big thing about Annihilation, I think, is how they kind of, uh, how they handled Nova, man. It made Nova such a cool, important character who became the champion of Xandar. He became Nova Prime and downloaded all of the Nova power into himself. Uh, I can't really remember which omnibus it was because I read Annihilation, Conquest, and then the Three War of Kings omnibus back to back right before I started the channel when I started collecting the omnibus. So I don't really remember what happened in which book. It's kind of like a big blur of all uh, five omnibus. But uh, I remember flying through these, man. I definitely loved what Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning did. A lot of Moon Dragon stuff, which uh, kind of was reminiscent in 90s Marvel Cosmic. Was that a... Uh, is this where they brought back Darkhawk? See, I don't remember which run that was in. But this one is back in print now for you guys who missed out on it and want to at least complete the Annihilation and Annihilation Conquest set. Let's see what they got in the back. Annihilation Saga. What was this? Like a... Uh, yeah, like a encyclopedia almost... Um, Handbook of the Marvel Universe modernized comic to explain what was going on. So that's some of the bonus material you get. Some character designs, some covers. A lot of Nova action here. There you go, first appearance of Nova, Wraith. And then you get an afterword here. 
All right, then we got two DC Comics Omnis, both printing material from the New 52 era, and we're going to start with looking at Superman by Grant Morrison. All right, we finally got another Superman omnibus. He is criminally under omni in this field, right? Like, we don't have enough Superman Omnis. This is Superman by Grant Morrison, which collects his New 52 run in Action Comics. You've got art by Rags Morales, Andy Kubert, Brad Walker. I love the matte finish on this dust jacket, too. Really nice. Here's the spine, and then here's the back. I remember reading a couple of these issues. This was like right around the time when I got back into comics, and I was interested with like this regular guy Superman in a t-shirt and jeans. Uh, this collects, like I said, the 12 issues plus annual one, I believe. Yeah. Oh, no, 18 issues plus annual one. It has a $75 cover price. The inside of the dust jacket, uh, just basically giving some reviews from some of the bigger sites. Here's some biographies on the creators on this book. You do get a nice wraparound cover here. And we'll jump into it. So these thinner Omnis from DC have great binding. I didn't mention the binding on the uh, Annihilation Conquest because it's what you would expect from Marvel with those thinner pages, they lay flat. This has that more paper feeling paper. It's not as shiny. Uh, and it has that type of binding that Let's see. Let's get to the middle. Where it lifts off of the spine here. Uh, it feels a little tight, though. Maybe I need to relax it a little bit. But otherwise, uh, yeah, it'll lay down flat. Once you get to the middle, once you uh, relax this one a little bit, it'll loosen up. So anyway, uh, New 52, Action Comics, Superman. It only ran for a few issues. It didn't go the full 52 issues like some of the other titles did. I don't really remember much from this. Uh, it looks like a quick read, though. I was flipping through this earlier. It has good artwork. I love Andy Kubert. And, um, yeah, I mean, because the cover gallery. Is that Jim Lee? Yep. That looks like the Prime 1 statue. So you get some variant covers in the back. Some bonus materials. I got to read this one and, and drop a review on it, though. I don't really remember anything from the issues that I read. And last up, we saved the biggest and maybe the best for last Swamp Thing, the new 52 Omnibus. You got Scott Snyder. You got uh, writers like Jeff Lemire, Charles Soule. Plus, you got Yannick Paquette and Jesus Sayas. This collects almost 50 issues of uh, new 52 content, which we'll take a look at now. And last up, we got the Swamp Thing, New 52 Omnibus. This has a couple of different writers, which is why I guess they went with the New 52 Omnibus rather than like Superman by Grant Morrison. Yeah, it's got Scott Snyder, Yannick Paquette, and Jesus Sayas, but there are other writers on this book, which I'm sure we'll see in a moment. I do like how DC seems to be printing more and more of their New 52. I just saw earlier today, uh, Volume 2 for the Batman New 52 Omnibus has been solicited, so that's great. This does collect issues 1 through 40 uh, of Swamp Thing, including that Villain Month issue 23.1, Annuals 1 through 3, Futures N1, plus Animal Man 12, 17, and Aquaman 31. All that for $125 cover price. Inside of the dust jacket just talks a little bit about Swamp Thing, kind of Alec Holland once was a man, his consciousness now in a body composed of roots, moss, and plant matter. Talks a little bit about Scott Snyder and y Yannick uh, Paquette. You do have some graphics on the hardcover here, kind of like a wraparound cover. But it's nice. Getting a lot of Swamp Thing material, man. We have the Nancy Collins omnibus, the Alan Moore uh, absolutes. Here's your cover page. Here shows more of the writers. So yeah, uh, Charles so Charles Soule, Jeff Lemire, Scott Tuft, and Jeff Parker. A slew of artists throughout this run. I've always heard good things about this run. I haven't gotten into this one yet either, but anytime you hear someone mention New 52, a lot of times you'll hear people say, yeah, the only thing that was really good was Batman and Swamp Thing. So <laughs> interested to jump into this one. I'm a huge Swamp Thing fan. Every time I read something of Swamp Thing, I just love it. So uh, looking forward to this one, but this is a thicker Omni that has kind of tight binding. Now, when you get to the middle, I mean, it does suffer a little bit of gutter loss here, even though, it does lift up. It's just tight, man. So I'm hoping that this one will uh, loosen up a little bit over time and relaxing the spine a little bit. So definitely want to stretch that spine. The artwork looks great throughout this book, though. I was flipping through this when I took off this, uh, the plastic. It looks awesome. I've heard great things about the run. 
Definitely one that I need to read and drop a review for. All right, guys, so that's today's haul. Like I said, big shouts out to Marvel Comics, to Organic Price Books. And like I said, we're doing the giveaway for the Spider-Man Premium Format exclusive once we hit 125,000 subscribers. All you got to do is be subscribed to this channel, hit the notification bell, hit the like button, and leave a comment on this video and any other video where I promoted this giveaway. Once we hit the milestone, we'll go live, pick a random video where I promoted the giveaway, and use a random YouTube comment generator to draw a worldwide winner. Before you guys bounce up out of here, make sure to check the Indiegogo campaign in the description. We are crowdfunding our second exclusive variant and my daughter's first published artwork in the comic book industry for Invincible Red Sonja number one. This is the new series by Amanda Connor and Jimmy Palmiotti. Right now we're about 80 backers strong. We got to pump those numbers up. So support the channel, support our daughter, and get a dope variant cover. Don't go anywhere. Check out my other omnibus hauls in the playlist to the right and stay minty fresh. Peace.